This is an urgent message from RestoreTheConstitutionalRepublic.org. By now, you've probably heard something about the issues surrounding Barack Obama's citizenship problems as they pertain to his constitutional eligibility to be President of the United States. And unless you've taken the time to really research the facts, you probably don't actually know what all the commotion is even about. Or if you've relied on what our highly dishonest mainstream media and those in Mr. Obama's camp have been telling you, then you really have not heard the truth. The agents of misinformation want you to believe that this is an absurd battle being waged by conspiracy theorists. However, the issue is real, and the matter is serious. And simply trying to shoot the messenger will not make the message disappear. And why should it? This is our country we're talking about. The real hate mongers want you to believe this is about Mr. Obama's politics, or even worse, his race. We want to dispel the rumors you may have been hearing, and we want to set the record straight. If we just ignore the facts, we'll probably journey down a road from which there will be no return. To truly understand the truth, however, will take a little bit of your time. So let's take a few minutes to discover the whole truth. The United States Constitution, which all members of the House and Senate have solemnly sworn to support and defend, states no person except a natural-born citizen or a citizen of the United States at the time of the adoption of this Constitution shall be eligible to the office of President. What is clear and indisputable is that a natural-born citizen is a citizen by no act of law such as naturalization, and also that a child born to U.S. citizens on U.S. soil is a natural-born citizen. After the U.S. Constitution was written, Further clarifications were made. All persons born in the United States and not subject to any foreign power are declared to be citizens of the United States. Two months after the statute was enacted, on June 16, 1866, the 14th Amendment was proposed and declared ratified on July 28, 1868. The first clause of the first section reads, All persons born or naturalized in the United States and subject to the jurisdiction thereof are citizens of the United States and of the state wherein they reside. In 1866, Representative Bingham of Ohio stated, Every human being born within the jurisdiction of the United States of parents not owing allegiance to any foreign sovereignty is, in the language of our Constitution itself, a natural-born citizen. The chosen wording of the framers here makes it clear that they had drawn a distinction between themselves, persons born subject to British jurisdiction, and natural-born citizens, who would not be born subject to British jurisdiction or any other jurisdiction other than the United States. And so the framers grandfathered themselves into the Constitution as being eligible to be president. But the grandfather clause only pertains to any person who was a citizen at the time of the adoption of this Constitution. It should be obvious that the framers intended to deny the presidency to anyone who was a British subject at birth. If this had not been their intention, then they wouldn't have needed to include a grandfather clause which allowed the framers themselves to be president. Our Constitution and subsequent relevant case law establishes two distinct types of citizens. U.S. citizen or native-born citizen and natural-born citizen. As you will see, not everyone who is a U.S. citizen is also a natural-born citizen. A U.S. citizen is one who was born to at least one parent who was a U.S. citizen, or one who was born in the U.S. mainland, or one who became naturalized sometime after being born. The framers of the Constitution instituted a specific set of requirements to hold the highest office of the land, a natural-born citizen. A natural-born citizen is one who is not only born in the U.S. mainland, but who is also born of parents who are both U.S. citizens. That presents a very precise requirement, and the framers' reasons are very easily researched and understood. But right now, the issue is not really why they chose to write this requirement into law, but only that they did write this requirement into law. And as a nation governed by the rule of law, we cannot simply toss it aside, even if we don't like it or agree with it. It is the law. On April 30th, 2008, the United States Senate, by Resolution 511, confirmed this fundamental constitutional requirement by stating, whereas John Sidney McCain III was born to American citizens on an American military base in the Panama Canal Zone in 1936, now therefore be it resolved that John Sidney McCain III is a natural-born citizen under Article 2, Section 1 of the Constitution of the United States. Interestingly, one of the co-authors of the resolution was none other than Senator Barack Barack Obama. In his words, as well as those of his colleagues in the Senate, a natural-born citizen is one who is born to American citizens, not citizen, citizens. 
But why does this matter? Barack Obama's father was not an American citizen. He was Kenyan, and at the time of his birth, because of his father's nationality, Barack Obama was subject to the laws of Britain. According to Mr. Obama's own website, when Barack Obama Jr. was born on August 4, 1961, in Honolulu, Kenya was a British colony, still part of the United Kingdom's dwindling empire. As a Kenyan native, Barack Obama Sr. was a British subject whose citizenship status was governed by the British Nationality Act of 1948. That same act governed the status of Obama Sr.'s children. Since Senator Obama has neither renounced his U.S. citizenship nor sworn an oath of allegiance to Kenya, his Kenyan citizenship automatically expired on August 4, 1982. Remember what we've already seen as part of our Constitution, the law of our land. All persons born in the United States and not subject to any foreign power are declared to be citizens of the United States. Also remember what Barack Obama states himself. That same act governed the status of Obama Sr.'s children. And also, whereas John Sidney McCain III was born to a American citizens. To see the level of trickery and deception to which Mr. Obama is willing to sink, one needs to search no further than his own website. Notice how the words he uses are so crafty and misleading. He states, smears claiming Barack Obama doesn't have a birth certificate aren't actually about that piece of paper. They're about manipulating people into thinking Barack is not an American citizen. No, Mr. Obama knows full well this isn't about whether he is an American citizen, but rather that he is not a natural-born American citizen, as our Constitution requires. He then deceptively tries to use a much more rare term, native born, which historically is still not natural born because that speaks to birthplace and not parentage. As you are likely aware, there are numerous active lawsuits challenging Mr. Obama's eligibility. Those that are asking that the long vault version of his birth certificate be produced for verification are rightfully lodged, since part of the natural born qualification is birth on U.S. soil. Barack Obama has fought mightily and expensively to prevent having to reveal that document. However, even though that document may well show him not to be eligible because of his actual birthplace, the fact that his father was Kenyan and subject to British law by an act that also governed Barack Jr., Mr. Obama himself states that he cannot possibly hold the office of President of these United States legally. It is time for we the people to demand that our elected officials support and defend our Constitution as they solemnly swore to do. For information on how to do that, please visit us at RestoreTheConstitutionalRepublic.org. We are also ask that each member of Congress contact us before the verification of the Electoral College vote to learn that your specific constitutional duty in this matter is to call for a formal investigation before the vote is verified on January 8th. We the people will not allow our beloved Constitution to be hijacked and desecrated.